Has a handoff and the reverse to Katie Nixon, and he's going to throw down the right side, wide open. Dimitri Stanley backpedaling face mask high grab on the right side of the end zone. Oh, what a play! Touchdown! Touchdown, Colorado! Well, Katie Nixon didn't have a big part in that ball game. Only had one catch for 70 yards, but he did have a touchdown pass right there. But yet, in a back and forth game, the Buffaloes fall 35 to 30 to the Arizona Wildcats. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Buffalo Stampede. Coach Gary Barnett, voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. He said before this one was going to be a fair fight. It certainly was a great game, back and forth, but disappointing loss for Colorado. It was a disappointing loss. And, Mark, you can pinpoint two or three situations that led to it. And, and I think the opening drive was critical mm -hmm. in that uh, we had five penalties in the opening drive and uh, we had to settle for a, for a field goal you know, in a series where we absolutely dominated right. the entire you know, series that time. And we couldn't come away with a touchdown. And then later on, uh, when we could not get the ball in from first to goal on the three, uh, three yard line. So, uh, you know, you mentioned KD, you know, KD, mysteriously did not play anymore mm -hmm. and uh, was injured in some degree. We had a lot of that tonight, but uh, today, but it was a fair fight. And, uh, you know, Arizona did a good job of adjusting coming out of halftime, I thought. You think of a ball game which you score 30 points and have 496 yards of offense that uh, you should be, you know, good enough to win offensively. That The defense is struggling. Both sides, that's true. But really, in those key moments, we didn't make the plays that the Buffaloes needed. Well, and especially in the second half. Yeah. And, it's, it's, uh, I, and I thought uh, most of that was because Arizona was able to make some adjustments and take advantage of uh, some new players in there that had no experience. They were able to get the matchups they wanted on the players they wanted. And, um, you know, they were able to move at will almost. Tony Brown for the second game in a row has been phenomenal. Went over 140 yards for the second consecutive game. Are you talking about playmakers? That guy just shows up every week. You know, he's amazing, Mark, and uh, he doesn't look the part like uh, LaVisca does yeah. or some other guys that we've had, but he just makes great plays, and he's got a great avoid. He makes guys miss. He catches everything, mm -hmm. and he just keeps coming through, and he's a great blocker. He's just, he's just probably one of the most complete players I've seen. Yeah, 140-some yards receiving. Didn't have a receiving touchdown, but he did have one on a reverse, and so he had a rushing touchdown this ball game. But the Buffaloes fall before the game. You know about the tradition of the Buff Walk. We caught up with a bunch of young fans who are at the Buff Walk. We're here for the Colorado-Arizona Buffs football game, and the Buff Walk was just the coolest thing that I've seen so far. Seeing all of the football players there just walking through was just really great, and just give them high fives and see if I can get their hopes up and make them play a better football game. Upstairs today, I saw the all the players walking through a tunnel. The band was there too. Everybody was just really happy. I recognized that the band was playing the fight song. My favorite part of the song is shoulder to shoulder, we will fight, 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 fight. As a fan, you want to come to the game early so that you get the Buff Walk or the Chips Kids Club or just seeing Ralphie drive by. It's just really great to hang out with your friends, to have a tailgate, play a game of football. It's just really awesome. As you can see, I'm wearing my Kids Club shirt, so I'm going to be at Kids Club for half the game. And I get to see Ralphie run on the field. Uh, Ralphie's just, she's just a beautiful buffalo, and the stadium is just great. Folsom Field is my favorite place to watch a football game. It's just going to be a great day. I also hope they win. Great pregame tradition for the Colorado Buffaloes. Those kids look very familiar, almost like they were Buff Vision director Derek Swanson's kids. I'm pretty sure that's who we saw out there. Hey, injuries continue to be an issue. Now, two weeks ago against Arizona State, huge injuries for the Buffaloes. No, no uh, LaVisca Chenault in this ball game. No Mustafa Johnson. But then, let's see, Jalen Sammy went down. Brady Russell went down. Katie Nixon went down. Mikhail Onu went down. You know, coaches are never going to use injuries as an excuse. But my goodness, at some point in time, that's enough. They certainly complicate it. Yes, they do. And, and uh, as Coach Tucker said, nobody cares mm -hmm. about injuries. Uh, and so he's not going to go into that that way. But it complicates preparation. It complicates adjustments that you can or cannot make in a game. I mean, see, you can make no adjustments in the second half defensively because 
of, of their injury issues in the secondary and up front. So they had to be pretty base. Well, Arizona knew it. They had a good uh, uh, adjustment coming out and they were just able to get the ball out on the outside and into, into uh, situations where they had the matchups they wanted. And you, you know, it just, you're just so hamstrung, no pun intended, yeah. when, when that kind it was of was hamstrung, happens. not hamstring, by the way. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> you know, when you're in that situation as a coach and, and you're trying to make the adjustments and you can't. Well, things don't get any easier now. Now the Buffaloes have got a short week. Next Friday night, the Buffs will take on the Oregon Ducks, one of the more high-powered offenses in the Pac-12. That's a fantastic challenge on a short week. It absolutely is, uh, but you got to relish it, mm -hmm. and you got to look forward to it and get eager and get your work done, and you never know. That's why they play the game. So these guys will get on the plane. And I think Coach Tucker's got these guys thinking the right way. Coaches certainly think the right way. And I think you'll see an eager team get on there. They may be really young, probably nobody's shaving in that group, but <laughs> but they're gonna be they're gonna be excited about playing this game. Yeah, young fellas are gonna be asked to grow up very quickly as Colorado Falls and his family weekend of the Arizona Wildcats 35 to 30. That's the coach, Gary Barnett. Coming up next here to Stampede, he worked the sidelines for us. We'll talk with Andy Lindahl in a moment. 35-30 Arizona, Montez the snap, dropping, looking to throw, has time, fires it over the middle, and it's incomplete, incomplete on a crossing pattern. It's a turnover on downs, and Arizona now has the football 35-30 advantage with just inside two and a half to play. Hey, listen, guys, I'm that down the hurts, right? Yeah. Okay. There's not that much difference between the squads. It's going to be about execution, and that's what happened to us today. Okay. We didn't execute on the inside of the ball enough to get the job done. Ain't nobody gonna feel sorry for us about an injury here or this or that. It don't matter. We got a whole bunch of games left. So like it's now what? Now, all I know how to do is fight. So how do you keep from going back? How do you move forward? <laughs> you gotta fight. That's what it is. You gotta fight. You can't make excuses. The only thing you can do is say, what can I do to get better? You either get it done or you don't. So we did it. So we move forward and get ready for the next one. That's what I'm gonna do. That's what you're gonna do. And we're gonna do it together. This is a football team. And I love to fight. And I love to figure it out. But I know we can win. I know it. You gotta know it too. Are right, you with a family on three? One, two, three. Man. Well, the game ended with a whimper there on a fourth down incomplete pass. Turnover on downs. Arizona ran out the clock. A couple of comments from the head coach, Mel Tucker, after the Buffalo's fall on family weekend of the Arizona Wildcats, 35-30. to The Buffs now 3-2 and two overall, 1-1 one and one in Pac-12 conference play. Back in the stampede, Mark Johnson, Andy Lindo. I worked the sidelines for us in this one. We kept you busy down there today with all the injuries. Yeah, unfortunately, they had a lot of guys go out, and I don't know, Sammy was on crutches afterwards. Onu looked like he was getting loose but never made it back into the game. I don't know, Mark, and Katie Nixon has something strange, so yep. we'll see he what He just kind of disappeared develops. in this ball He game, did. Yeah. We, you guys are very keen with your eye to notice that he wasn't out there all of a sudden, and frankly, I couldn't find him on the bench. So they've got to get healthy in a short period of time and play, I don't know, maybe the toughest team on their schedule <laughs> left. No big deal. <laughs> you know, and you talk about the injuries to this. It's been the key guys. I mean, there are a lot of teams that have injuries, but you're talking about LaVisca, Mustafa, KD, your nose guard at 320 pounds, and Jalen Sammy, your leading tight end who's caught – uh, it's the number of passes for the Buffaloes. So it's hitting them. And Mikhail Onu, who's been your great playmaker in the back end of that defense, it's hitting them in key areas. And that's what would become so tough about this over the course of time. Yeah. You know, I know coaches don't want to make injuries an excuse. And Mel Tucker's told everybody much to that effect. But the bottom line is, as you and Coach Barnett laid out during the broadcast, they were down to guys that used to play quarterback in Sam Neuer trying to go out there and <laughs> yeah. make a play. And I respect Sam for getting out there and trying to do something. But man, when you've got a playmaker like Khalil Tate, who moves around and tends to draw the eyes of the secondary to him and allows guys to get open deep behind those guys then, that can be really tough, Mark. And, and you know what stinks? One of the touchdowns on the Onu injury, that receiver had revved up. He had sped by. It was a beautiful route to get underneath the football, but had Onu not pulled whatever was going on in his yeah. back, I wonder if he would have been there to contest it. It was just a hard luck day for them. Yeah, it certainly was. Those injuries continue to pile up as Buff gets set to travel to Eugene, Oregon next Friday night. You know, we always take care of our girl, Ralphie, of course. She ran spectacularly both times in this ball game, And we got a great donor here at CU that's helped up the program by buying her a brand new trailer. Behind me is Ralphie's new trailer. It's her new home when she comes here to Folsom Field. It was time for us to get a new trailer. Uh, her old trailer we've had for just under 10 years. and. 
We only get the best for Ralphie and make sure everything she has is top notch. A huge, huge thank you to the Hoover family who made a generous donation to the Ralphie program so we were able to purchase this trailer. This trailer, we started from scratch with what we needed for Ralphie to make sure she was safe and comfortable at all times. We started with a beefed up suspension system, bigger axles, stronger axles, and a big suspension system that's actually air ride. So when we're driving down the road, the whole trailer will lift up, giving Ralphie a very smooth ride, a comfortable ride, and a pleasurable ride as she's driving down the road. From there, we increased the comfort level of her with the cushioning on the floor of the trailer. This is a special rubber cushioning that's in there that allows liquids to drain out while still maintaining a rigid, solid, and comfortable place for her to stand on. This trailer is just bigger, faster, stronger, just like Ralphie. We made the whole trailer bigger. It's longer, it's wider in her area, so that gives her more room to stand up, to lie down, to walk around, to do whatever she wants to do while she's in the trailer. The trailer also has some additional square footage for the Ralphie handlers in the front of the trailer so they can work a little bit more easier as they're getting Ralphie ready for her game day run. The trailer is also a little bit taller. We've increased the ventilation as well as the insulation of the trailer too, which will allow us to regulate the temperature inside the trailer based on the outside temperatures. Ralphie's obviously the greatest live mascot in all of college sports, so we had to make sure she had the greatest trailer possible. Again, huge shout out to the Hoover family who made this possible for us. Uh, we couldn't have done it without them. Big thank you. And as always, go Buffs. Yeah, we always take care of Ralphie, our girl, as well as you possibly can. And she was great again in this uh, loss by the Buffaloes. 35-30, they fall to Arizona. Both of these teams had nearly 500 yards of offense, about 1,000 yards between the two of them, 65 points by the time it was all said and done. And that defense made some plays. Mikhail Anu had an interception uh, once again for the Buffaloes, his fourth of the season. But, boy, Colorado just couldn't get a stop in that second half. No, and it was tough. And uh, we've seen Khalil Tate a lot, frankly, more than I'd like to see Khalil Tate. I'm glad he's He needs to leave, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Arizona. Good yeah. luck to you, by the way. I hope things are great in the next <laughs> career. But you know what? Like we talked about, he's a playmaker that tends to draw the attention of the defense. And as you got beat up in the secondary mark, you just had guys that weren't sure where they needed to be. Whereas in the first half, we did see from the buffs, there were some great breaks on the ball. Yep. Guys were reading the plays. You could tell they were in the tape and they had saw things that week. So we had a great pass break up near the sideline here in the first quarter. I can't remember. Might have been Delrick Abrams. I, I yeah, can't I remember Abrams, who yeah. did it, but man, they they were just a different team when they lost a lot of their veteran guys. You know, you've got to give some credit to the veteran offensive coordinator Nolan Mazzoni, who made some great adjustments, continued to attack the edges, and for a young defense, they've had their issues kind of holding the edge early on in this season. So that's where that, that defense has got to grow up a little bit, despite those injuries you're dealing with. You were in the locker room, kind of, and got a sense of those guys afterward. I, I got a sense. I stayed up in the booth and didn't get a chance to see the fellas in post game. It was a, a disappointment, a steely resolve, though, with that group. Wasn't yeah, you know what I liked? I got to talk to Steven Montez in particular, and he was defiant. And I don't know that I've seen defiance out of this team before. Now, you know, not off-putting to me, not standoffish with me, but, no. you know, you, you yeah. got a guy who's got a little red rear end going for mm -hmm. himself, and I like to see that, quite honestly. You know, that last throw that he had to try to get the first down on the fourth and four, he got hit right after he released the football. I know it wasn't a perfectly placed pass, but he put it where Stanley had a chance to try to catch it. Yeah. Steven's been a fighter this year. I think that's going to, you know, trickle down to the rest of the group. I, I think they'll put up a pretty good fight in Oregon. But again, it's Oregon. That's a tall task come no Friday. No doubt about it. In a Friday night, a late one. In fact, 8.05 Mountain Time. Gary and I are going to hit the air at 6.05 Mountain Time with a bubble of Stampede. So you know that's going to be an electric building at Outson Stadium next week in Eugene, Oregon. We'll take another time out here to Bubble of Stampede. When we come back, we'll continue to unpack the bubble is 35 to 30 loss to Arizona on Family Weekend. Shoulder of the quarterback, Tatum takes a snap, drops, steps up, he's flushed down, moving to the near side, eyes downfield off his back foot, rips it downfield, and it is intercepted by Mikhail Onu at the 45 to the 40, and he's cut down, and a turnover by the Wildcats, and the Buffaloes have a chance. Outstanding play by Mikhail Onu there in the interception, he continues to be playmaker for the Buffaloes in a 35-30 loss, Arizona, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson, Nate Lambert, linebacker for the Buffaloes joining us. Great play by Mikhail, wasn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, you know, he's been a turnover machine all year, and um, he's a great asset. Love to have him. All right. Disappointing loss last Saturday, wasn't it? Talk a little bit about the defensive effort for you guys. You know, even though it didn't go the way we wanted to, um, I still think we, we play well as a team. And, um, you know, we have that next man up mentality, and 
Uh, I trust every one of those guys, and you know we, we kept fighting all the way till the end. This has got to be, I mean, it's a little bit ridiculous after a while how many guys are going down, though, isn't it? I mean, as good a shape as you guys are in, the great offseason you guys had, you got to be shaking your head a little bit. Yeah, you know, it's definitely frustrating um, just because we're not playing with our, with our, uh, you know, our top guys. But, um, you know, th things happen, and it's, it's not just happening to us, it's happening to other teams, too. And so that next man mentality is, is, is what we're clinging to. And, um, you know, guys coming in are, are doing a great job. And I love the way kind of Tucker's been handling this. I know we talked to you guys about it in the locker room. And, and he, the message from him has been, hey, it's part of it. This is not an excuse. I believe in all of you guys. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and we back him on that completely. And, and we have that same same mindset um, because those guys are recruited to come play here. And then they're here for a reason. Um, and, you know, myself and the guys on the team trust them completely. You know, not having a guy like Mustafa, though, in front of you, that, that then weakens things probably a little bit and, and kind of makes it a little bit tougher to do your job, though, doesn't it? Yeah, you know, a little bit. Um, just because Mustafa's the leader on that D line. And, um, you know, if guys aren't lined up properly, you, you'll get them lined up and get them going. Um, but not to say those guys aren't doing a great job because right. they are. Um, you know, uh, true freshmen coming in there, playing as hard as they can. And, you know, I'm definitely excited to get this stuff with that. I thought Coach Gary Barnett made a phenomenal point in the second half of our broadcast on Saturday night game against Arizona. He said there's great youth out there, which means there's also potential for great growth as well. Have you seen those young guys really growing? Yeah, definitely. From week one to now, those guys are taking huge steps, huge strides. Um, not only learning their, their part, but how it all fits into the, the whole grand scheme of the defense. And, um, you know, they're playing hard and um, getting their job done and, and, and I can count on them to do what, do what they can. You know, you might have seen a difference on the sideline at CU games. There's a tent out there. It's an injury tent. It's been used way too much here the last couple of weeks, but Dr. Eric McCarty talked to us about that new little piece they have on the sideline. So new this year is a medical tent. This gives an opportunity to look at the player in a much more private situation on the sideline instead of in front of thousands of people. And so this is cut on. It was developed in Alabama, and we got ours this year for the first time. CU Sports Medicine, Dr. Potter and myself decided to buy this for the team and it's really been good. It's very private. It's a nice place to be able to look at a player and talk to him without all these people and all the, the noise around him. So it's a really, really intimate environment for us to take care of the player instead of having to go all the way to the locker room. So we've had it for a couple games. We don't have room on our sidelines, but away we do. We haven't had to use it. Unfortunately, we've had to use it tonight, but it's already, you can see its benefit. Now, just look at the injury tent on the sideline. That thing's been way too busy here the last few weeks. Here and, and, and away games. <laughs> That's right. Uh, the, the youth on the, on the back end of that defense, are, are you seeing those guys grow as well? Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I just think that the leadership roles we have in each of the spots is allowing those young guys to, uh, you know, grow as players um, faster than they should be able to. And uh, I think they're doing a great job filling in. The big plays uh, this season, you guys have given up. But I think that's been one of the things I think has been interesting about this defensive unit. You've given a few big plays, you got to cut down on that. Some yards and some points, but there's been a, a propensity to really make a play. We just saw Mikhail Ondo's interception there, for example, or forcing a fumble or that kind of thing. So even the guys have bent, you haven't broken this season. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think the resilience of this defense, uh, you know, it, it hurts us, but w the resilience it keeps us in games yeah. and it allows us to keep playing. Um, and, you know, we're a fourth quarter team. Um, I'm an all four quarter team and, and we're not going to give up till the end. How about the short week this week? What kind of challenges? Uh, you know, just getting getting guys healthy again and um, getting back into it. And, uh, I, I think I don't think it'll have too much impact on us. Just the way we prepare, we prepare so well and the way we practice. Um, the coaches get it right and uh, I'm not too worried about the short week. And facing Oregon, a very potent offense. Yeah, definitely. I'm, I mean, they get a great quarterback, great offensive line and um, explosive players. And uh, I'm excited to play those guys. Um, just because, you know, they're a top-tier program. And, um... All right, middle linebacker Nate Lamb and he and the Buffs on Friday night are on the road against the Oregon Ducks. Coming up next, we'll talk with the offensive coordinator, Jay Johnson, here in the Stampede. Jackson through the backfield in motion. Montez gives on the end around as they pitch it to Tony Brown. He's looking for the edge. He cuts inside of Longer at the 10-yard line. Outside the numbers, steps out of a tackle. Wow. Oh, and sold! Touchdown! Touchdown!
Colorado. And oh, Tony Brown had himself a big ball game, including that uh, end around there and a touchdown. That was uh, his only touchdown. Did not have a receiving touchdown, but it went for over 140 yards receiving. Back here to Stampede, voice of the boss, Mark Johnson. Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Buffaloes, coming off that 35-30 loss to Arizona this uh, last weekend. He had almost 500 yards of offense. Uh, that's outstanding. 30 points, pretty good. Take us through your team's, uh, your side of the ball's performance in that ball game. Well, you know, we, we did some good things, Mark, but, mm -hmm. uh, you know, still had some critical areas where we fell short. Uh, I think uh, the first drive of the game, yep. uh, we, we were down there in the red area and had an opportunity to, to punch it in. We didn't. Then, obviously, that first uh, start of the fourth quarter, we're down there first and goal at the two. And, you know, when you talk about offensive football and, and red zone, we're 100% scoring, which is great, but you need to score touchdowns. Right. And I talked to the guys yesterday, you know, if we, if we get one of those and, and that, then it's a completely different outcome. So so that was disappointing. Overall, the guys did a good job in certain areas, but need to improve there. Jay, take us into that, that red zone when you get down. Everything is, it gets constricted, of course, and the challenges there offensively when you get down inside the 10 yard. It, it is a challenge because they don't have as much field to defend, obviously, and so their, their secondary players, which are normally deeper to defend the pass, are kind of up there involved in both. And so oftentimes you're outnumbered in the run game and things of that nature, and you got to make some things happen. So uh, it, it does present some challenges. We've been solid, but we got to be better. Noel and I were talking on the radio show last week about the way you guys have been, I use the word term stubborn, because you're persistent. Maybe that's a better way of putting it in terms of running the ball. Even in the first half when things haven't been maybe productive, you stick with that. That's important because ultimately you end up breaking some, don't you? Absolutely. I mean, that's a little bit of our mindset. That's how we practice. That's kind of the mentality that Coach Tucker brings. And so we talked to our guys. I mean, we were saying in the fourth quarter the other day, hey, this is just like practice, like team run on a sure. Tuesday and a Wednesday. And so we're trying to get that to carry over because if you can do that and have that physicality, as things continue, we, we begin to begin to get, get some positive plays. Well, the Buffaloes are getting ready for a road trip on a Friday night at Oregon. We're going to continue with Jay Johnson in a moment, but we had a great moment in soccer. Taylor Korniak became the all-time leading scorer in CU history last week. Now turns. Korniak chips it. Left foot from the top of the box. It's in. There's the record. Taylor Korniak, the all-time leading scorer in Colorado Buffs history. How about that? In the third minute, Taylor Korniak, number 22 in your program, number one in the record books here as the party is on, the teammates celebrating. Taylor Korniak wasting no time drilling that one with the left foot. And how about that? 95 career points for Taylor Korniak. That was a great moment for Taylor Korniak, continuing with Jay Johnson, the offensive coordinator for the Buffaloes. I want to get you to talk a little bit about Alex Fontenot, the way he's continued to grow as a running back. Uh, you've seen great progress from him, haven't you? I have. You know, I'm really proud of Alex. You know, Alex is kind of a quiet, uh, quiet person, doesn't say a lot, but boy, you can tell he's really on track. And the thing that I, I like about Alex, one, he's done a good job with the ball. Mm -hmm. You know, he's run, done a good job with the ball, ran hard, but then also he's doing a great job when he doesn't have the ball. And that's becoming a complete back, and I think he's doing well. How about the offensive line? You know, it's, it's been good. You know, we, we've had some challenges there with, with a few guys nicked and things of that nature, but the next man up mentality has done well. So I'm proud of those guys. It's That's a big piece for us because we need to uh, have that continuity. And so when one kind of leaves, it's that communication piece and things of that nature. But, you know, Coach Cap does a great job, and those guys are coming along. Well, it's, it's been a challenge in particular on the defensive side from an injury standpoint, losing guys. you got to. I guess it's a fact of the game. you got to overcome that. It is. You know, it, everybody's dealing with it. You know, it's a next man up mentality, and that's going to be part of the sport every day every day around and so we got it we got to challenge it all right how this oregon game on friday night give us a thought on the defense you're going to face in uh, very strong you know they yeah. do a tremendous job you know if you look at their numbers they're outstanding they're in the top in the nation in almost all categories and certainly in the pac-12 so it's going to be a good challenge for us but i know our guys are working hard and ready for the challenge and how about the challenge of having a short week to do that yeah that's that's another the mode but sometimes you know that's even better because yeah. you know we, we had a great work day you know back at it today and, and guys are working hard so looking forward to the opportunity keeps everybody focused it? it certainly does <laughs> that's cool good luck like this weekend. Thank you, Mark. All right, that's offensive quarter Jay Johnson. He and the Buffaloes on Friday night. It's an 8.05 Mountain Time kickoff. The Buffs and the Ducks from Outson Stadium. That'll wrap up the Buffalo Stampede. I'm Voice of the Buffs, Mark Johnson. We'll talk to you next week.